Hey, Kay. Um, I spoke to Black a couple, uh, recently. Um, I asked him about a design for um, the Sonics, um, and he gave me the, uh, the pattern that he would get. Wanted, I wanted to ask you the same question. If you had a chance to um, design the new Sonic jerseys, what would it look like? Yeah. <clears throat> I would go to the throwback joints when they won the title. Those are joints I would go with. With the green Sonic over the front, them joints. Good question, man. Appreciate it. No doubt. Uh, next up, Tim Reynolds, please. Hey, Kevin, since we're obviously in a reflective sort of mood, I, I forgot to ask the other day, it, it got a lot of a lot of run on Twitter the last couple of days that it was 10 years ago, Saturday or Sunday, whatever day it was, that you had 66 at Rucker. I was just curious how much you think back about that that day and what went into that game and just, I mean, you still see the clips of it and still, I mean, what, what, I guess, what are your takeaways from it 10 years later? I'm um, just, as I get older, just uh, grateful for that opportunity. Um, I didn't know what I was doing in the moment, but for it to still last 10 years later, um, that shows how special it was. And uh, that's really what I've been about is creating moments for basketball fans. Uh, in the streets, in the arenas, overseas, uh, just trying to showcase what I can do. And hopefully people feel something when I when they watch me play. So it was one of those moments that uh, I'm grateful that because a lot of times, you know, opportunities come and go and you may, you know, breeze past them. But that one I took advantage of. So I'm glad I'm di I did it back then. Uh, and it's, and it's, it's pretty cool that it's still it's still at people's top people's minds, that, you know, around this time. It was such a weird time, Kevin. Like, it, were you hesitant at all about going out there and you know, you know, taking the risk of you know playing out sore and all that? Nah, because I was always doing that. I mean, I'm still fresh in the league at that point, so I wasn't really thinking about you know, you might get injured or <laughs> or you know, any ramifications of what could happen to me out there. It was just like I just wanted to play, and I felt like. A lot of those people who don't get opportunity to go see a Nick game or a net game when I was in town at that time, uh, you know, they was able to come to the park for free and watch us hoop. So it was uh, it was special. Thank you. Joe Barton, you're up. Hey, Kevin. Good one today. Um, I asked Tatum the same thing in the mix zone. But uh, do you – does it feel to you like you're just two wins away from a gold? No, nah, we're not even nah, – no, we're not even looking at it that way. We uh, – I mean, obviously, we know, the, we know the situation we're in, but we're trying to take it a day at a time and realize that um, this is part of the process, just get focused for the next day of practice and preparation for the next team that we play. Uh, but we're not trying to look too far down to the, to the end goal. We're just trying to focus on today. And I know, listen, I mean, you know, you, we've talked about this before where you, you've said and pointed out that there were games that were close in 16. But the gold medal game, you went out there and had 30, and I think you guys won by 30. And it doesn't feel like that's going to happen this time. It, it feels like watching it that these are much more like NBA games, and, and you have to kind of approach it that way. Does, does this tournament feel – like you go into each game kind of feeling more like that, that it's, it's like a toss up and it's, you know, it's going to be a back and forth kind of thing. Oh, no, I remember in 2012, we had some tight games. I had had 30 in a gold medal game against Spain. It was a tight game all the way to the end. I think we won by single digits. I don't remember, but uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, we didn't win every game by 30 in 2012. We played Lithuania in a pool play and, and, and it was a tight game. We played, Serbia, I think, in a pool play in 2016, and they had a chance to tie it up uh, at the end of regulation, and they had a wide open three to tie the game up. So it's like you're gonna have games where it's gonna be tight, and um, we understand that. And today it was good that we pulled away late, but we're not expecting to come out here and beat everybody by 30. If you go back to the history of you know the last few Olympics, you're gonna see some tight games up in there, especially you know 2012 that gold medal. Gold medal game, sorry. We'll go next to Dwayne Rankin. Thank you. Uh, Kevin, this is my first time on, so I'm I'm trying to get my bearings on, on what was asked before because I'm not part of the whole mixed deal. But 
want to ask you about Devin um, today. And obviously he didn't shoot the ball as well as he would like, but he had nine rebounds, five assists, three steals, uh, no turnovers. Uh, what did you think of his play today? Well, it just shows you how all around D Book is. You know, a lot of people look at him because he's such a pretty scorer. You know, he could do things so effortless, but he's a savant. You know, he wants to be an all around basketball player. And you've seen it tonight, you know, grabbing rebounds, going in and mixing up with the bigs, switching, guarding out on the perimeter, making passes. And then he made some timely shots for us. Uh, so Book is Book is an all around player who's only getting better. He's 24, I want to say. And right. We- about this on the bus, like he handles himself like a 35, 36 year old vet, you know, and that's only going to go well for him in Phoenix going forward. And tonight was one of those nights. If you're not shooting the ball well, that's not the whole game. And guys understand that he's one of those he's one of those players that can affect the game in every single facet. And you know, it, it's, it's a special player. Quick follow: there got so many guys that are first time in this. Um, as they, as you guys get closer and advancing, are, are you getting more questions from them on what to do, what not to do, or do you feel like they got it figured out right by now? It's basketball at the end of the day. These dudes are high IQ players. Like, and, you know, it may be a different setting and rules may change as far as you can sit in the lane, but like we all played in college, we all played in high school, so we understand what that's like. Um, but nobody's sitting around asking me questions on what's about to happen. You know, it's basketball, you know, and all of us, uh, you know, have got years under our belts and played in different systems and schemes and playoff games. We got to prepare different ways. So the IQ of these guys is, you know, is at the same level. We all at the same level, I feel. Thanks, Kevin. Terrell Thomas, you're up. Thank you. Uh, Hey, KD, uh, Terrell Thomas, These Urban Times. Two questions for you really quickly. Uh, from a music standpoint, I want to know, you were one of the first gentlemen to actually hear what Kanye West is working on with his Donda uh, project. With his Donda project. Uh, of course, he hasn't put it out yet, but uh, as he's still working here in Atlanta at Mercedes-Benz Stadium, has he hit you with any new music to kind of listen to while you're in Tokyo? And nah. I have- Go ahead, my bad, sorry for cutting you off. Oh, no, you're fine, you're fine. And, uh, and from a production standpoint, did you guys, I know you dibble and dabble in the music. Did you guys uh, share any gems with each other that night? No, of course not. That's Kanye West. He's a master at his craft. I mean, I was just sitting back and just taking in the vibes, listening. And uh, he's so humble that he was playing for everybody. Just wanted to hear that input. He was asking me what songs that I like, and I was like, "Well, are you, you, you asking me like, you know, I, the ones that I like? You gonna put them on an the album?" So, and he actually did that in that listening party. The joints that I like, you know, I heard him in that listening party. So I'm sure he's just making alterations to that to the album and it's going to be incredible when he drops it. And then from a basketball standpoint, I know you're busy in Tokyo doing things with USA basketball, but did you have a chance to see uh, what your Brooklyn Nets did in the draft recently? Yeah, yeah, very excited about the young fellas that we got. Um, well, I don't want to call them young fellas, the men that we drafted, um, you know, Cam and, and Dayron, and then we got three second round picks and um, and Zagorowski, am I saying his name right, Kessler, and, um, Get the last pick that we had um, and uh, uh, the guy from Florida State. Sorry, I'm missing his name right now. Uh, so I'm looking forward to those guys being a part of the program and, uh, you know, looking forward to learning and, 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 and helping them grow as much as they can and welcoming them to Brooklyn. And, you know, I can't wait to play with them. Thanks for your time, Katie. Next up is Josh Coyne. Hey, Kevin, Josh Coyne of Double Clutch UK. Uh, I spoke to Zach yesterday about the collection of coaches you guys have at your kind of um, at your service on, on camp. You have been in this situation before, uh, obviously in the Olympics, and you've dealt with a lot of NBA coaches. How val- valuable is it to have so many minds on camp? And, uh, you know, what, what, what benefit does that have to you? Yeah, man, you got champions over there. Uh, guys that have been around the game for so long, seen the evolution of the game, you know, they could teach us a bunch, you know, it's always a different perspective from guys that's actually in the action and somebody that's just outside watching. So, you know, we, <clears throat> and the best thing about our coaching staff is that we all have an open dialogue on what we feel needs to happen, practice games and, you know, they listen and, uh, and we listen to them as well. So it's been a, it's been a great relationship thus far. And on the other side, are there any challenges to having so many voices in one place? 
Not at all. I mean, we got a lot of, uh, you know, respected coaches in this locker room. Uh, they know exactly how to deal with, you know, this caliber player every day. It's not like they just on us every day, preaching stuff to us every day. They're kind of letting us be who we are. And then when the time is right, we speak up and hold us accountable. And that's only going to make us better. Thanks, Kevin. Good luck. Next up, we'll go to Tyler Boronski. Hey, Kevin, uh, you've faced Ricky Rubio a bunch throughout your career. I'm just curious, how is international play Rubio different than the Ricky Rubio you face in the NBA? Yeah, they're asking him to score more here. You know, in the league, um, it feels like teams that he's been on um, want him to run the show a little bit more and get guys involved. And that just shows he can play He can play a different styles and he's a versatile player and come out here and score the way he was scoring. I mean, the shots that he was making – uh, remind me, you know, show they had that scores mentality, you know, one leggers off the, off the glass, get into the paint, you know, shooting deep threes, you know, so, uh, you know, Ricky is a, is a true pro and he is a reason why so many teams want him uh, a part of their program year after year. And, you know, he's it, just showcasing that he can do more than just be a set up guard. Next up, we'll go to Samuel Rodriguez. Kev. Since coming from Vegas, can you talk about how you guys have grown together as a team over this time? And then can you talk about how big it was for your Nets to re-sign Blake Griffin today? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, the two weeks that we had in Vegas was key. We started to figure out, well, just first of all, getting acquainted with each other and kind of getting to know each other a little deeper. And, and then, uh, you know, as we start practicing more and going through those, you know, losses and ups and downs, we started to understand our roles a bit more and coach started to understand the rotation. So I think, uh, you know, you mix all of that in the pot, you know, you start to build a real team. And that's what I feel like we are at this point. Uh, guys are still growing. I feel like we're still getting better, you know. And so it's that's that's uh, it's, it's important, especially around this time. Um, and I have Blake back. I'm so excited. I mean, as soon as the season was over with, I was, t I was you know, telling him that we wanted him back and telling him that, you know, we should try to do it again. And it's glad to see it, you know, get done. Thank you. Okay, we got time for two more questions. We'll go to Rafiq. This is Rafiq with Nothing But That Sports Talk. Congratulations on the win. A 14 Thanks. team did get out to a tough start when you were trailed by as many as 11. What did you guys have to do in order to actually turn the tide and get you to that 29 points that you always have in each and every game throughout your career, whether it's the NBA or in college or in international play? Uh, we just had to slow down a bit and you know, getting to our stuff. I think defensively, we ramped it up. We ramped up the intensity and was able to get some stops. And that put us at ease a bit on the offensive end. We moved the ball and took the shots that we take, that we normally take, and they happened to go in in the second half. So we know it was a game of runs, and they made a few, and we made a few, and we was able to withstand their punch and keep it going. Thank you for your time. Last question. We'll finish with uh, Christian Winfield. Hey, what's going on, Kevin? How you doing? Good up, man. Uh, congratulations on the dub. Um, you spoke. You spoke a little earlier about Blake Griffin and what it means to have him resign. I'm wondering, obviously, Jeff, uh, to Denver. What does that mean for you? I mean, obviously, on one hand, you're probably happy for him because that's your that's your guy. But to lose him on the team, what does that mean? Um, like I said, I mean, guys, you know, um, definitely Blake and and uh, Jeff uh, meant so much to us last year, and it was good to be around them, right. but. The business, you know, guys got families and lives that they're trying to live. So for him to, uh, you know, get that deal and you know, something that he was looking forward to, I'm happy for him and can't wait to see him again and play against him again. Uh, but uh, we move forward, you know, we move forward and guys step up and just spin our mentality since I got to Brooklyn. So I'm um, looking forward to having Blake back and, you know, building on what we did last year. And it's always great to have continuity in your locker room in the NBA, especially in this business, because Guys to get traded, waived, cut in a matter of seconds. So it's good to have that continuity. And, and, and following up really quickly, if you don't mind, um, you, you spoke a little bit about the, the rookies that you guys are, are folding in. Now, are there going to be some challenges that come with folding in some new players and a team that's trying to compete for a championship when you're folding in guys that, you know, are just now getting their feet wet in the NBA? I think it's going to be a just period for them as well. I mean, it's a different game than it was in college. And uh, the coaching staff and – you know, you can tell those guys love to play. I think that, uh, you know, 
it'll be a fun transition for him. And uh, I'm looking forward to helping as much as I can and feeding off of that young energy as well. We definitely need that in our locker room. So I'm, I'm super excited about having them and, you know, uh, can't wait to see what they do in their careers, but especially, you know, starting with summer league. So I'm definitely going to be watching and re rooting for them and giving advice as much as I can and just being there for them.